Hi, this is Patrick, the author of Marco. In today's demonstration, we are going to explore client-side template rendering with Marco. The Marco templating engine has an extremely tiny runtime at less than 4 KB and it works equally well in the browser as it does on the server. The Marco runtime is implemented using the CommonJS module system, and the template compiler produces CommonJS modules as output. CommonJS is the same JavaScript module system used natively by Node.js. To utilize Marco in the browser, you will need a JavaScript module bundler such as Browserify or Lasso. For this demonstration, we will be using Lasso. Lasso is both a JavaScript module bundler and an asset pipeline that can handle CSS, images, fonts, and any type of front-end asset. Lasso also supports advanced features such as code splitting, minification, URL fingerprinting, and lazy loading. We won't spend too much time on the details of Lasso, but you will see how easy it is to use Lasso to generate client-side bundles for your web application. We are going to continue where we left off in the previous episode, so let's get started. Before we begin coding, let's first quickly summarize what we have done in the previous episodes. We have installed Express and created a server that is listing on port 8080. Our server has a single route. Our page controllers are in the pages directory. We are using Marco to render directly to the writable response stream. You can find the source code associated with this screencast and other screencasts on GitHub using the URL shown here. Let's start coding. Let's start by writing our client-side code. Let's create a client.js file in our main pages directory. This will serve as the main entry for our client-side application. This file will be a standard Node.js JavaScript module that is capable of importing other modules. For now, we will hold off on trying to utilize Marco to render a template. Instead, let's just add some test code. The first thing we're gonna do is import another module into this module. So we're gonna say var hello equals require, and we're gonna use a relative path to require a module named hello in the same directory. Hello is gonna export a function that we can use to produce a string that can be alerted to the user. So we'll say var message equals hello. We're gonna call that function with a single argument. We'll use Frank as a string argument. And then finally, we'll alert that message to the user. Let's now create the imported hello module. So we'll say new file, hello.js. The hello module will export a simple function that accepts a single argument. It will return a string based on that input argument. Let's now make our client-side code work in the browser using Lasso. Back at the command line, let's install the Lasso package. Lasso also provides Express middleware for serving up the static assets that it generates. Let's register that middleware in our server.js file. Now we need to integrate the Lasso asset pipeline with our main page. To do that, we are going to take advantage of the Marco custom tags that Lasso provides. By including a few custom tags in our page template, we can have Lasso generate the JavaScript and CSS bundles for our page and also have it inject the required HTML markup to include those generated files. Let's try it out. Back in our main page template, let's add the custom tags required by Lasso. The first tag that we will add to our page is the Lasso page tag. This tag will be used to invoke Lasso. When this tag first renders, Lasso will generate the required JavaScript and CSS bundles for our page. Internally, Lasso will walk a dependency graph to figure out exactly what to include on the page, and it will include everything in the proper order. The Lasso page tag requires the package path attribute. The value of this attribute should be the path to a browser.json file that declares the top-level client-side dependencies for our page. Before we create the browser.json file, let's first add two more custom tags needed by Lasso. Let's add the Lasso head tag to the end of our head section. This tag will be used to inject the style tags that will be used to include any CSS bundles that are generated by Lasso. For now, we are not going to have any CSS, 
but that's okay. Let's now add the lasso body tag. This tag should be placed at the end of the body section. This tag will be used to inject the script tags needed to include any JavaScript bundles that are generated by Lasso. And finally, let's create the browser.json file that is needed by Lasso. So we'll say new file, browser.json. Our browser.json file should have a single dependencies property. This is going to be an array of all of the top level client side dependencies for our page. The first dependency is going to be the main entry point for our client side application. So we're going to say require run, followed by the relative path to our main client module. Adding the require run dependency will result in the client.js module being included as part of our application's JavaScript bundle, as well as all of its dependencies. In addition, the module will then be executed in the browser as soon as the code is ready. Lasso uses static code analysis to figure out all of the required JavaScript modules. With those changes in place, let's try it out. Back at the command line, let's now start our server. Let's now refresh the page in our web browser. Here we see an alert, so we know that everything worked as expected. When we take a look at our page's HTML source code, we see that a single JavaScript bundle is being included. Let's now add a template that we can render in the browser. So we'll say new file, and we're going to name this file client.marco. Let's now create a simple template. Let's now go back to our client.js file. Let's first remove the old code. Let's now write some code to load and render our new template. So we're going to call template.render, and the first argument again is going to be the template data. We're going to pass a name. We'll use Frank again. The second argument can be a stream or a callback function. Since we don't have a stream to render to, we're going to use a callback function. It's going to be a standard Node.js style callback function that takes two arguments. The first argument will be an error, if any. The second argument will be the HTML string that is the result of rendering the template. We'll just use HTML as the variable name. Let's now add the rendered HTML to the DOM. To do that, we're going to create a div. We'll then assign the rendered HTML to the div using inner HTML. And then finally, we'll add the div to the DOM using document.body.appendChild. Let's try out the new code by restarting the server. Let's now reload the page in our web browser. It looks like our server crashed. Let's check the logs to see what went wrong. Back at the command line, we see an error message that says that the dependency of type Marco is not supported. Out of the box, Lasso only understands plain JavaScript and plain CSS. However, Lasso can be extended with plugins to teach it how to handle new languages that compile to either JavaScript or CSS. To use Marco in the browser, we must first install the Lasso Marco plugin to teach Lasso how to compile the required Marco templates into JavaScript modules. Back at the command line, we install the Lasso Marco plugin. We now need to configure Lasso to use the plugin that we just installed. So back in our server.js file, we're going to say require Lasso, and we're going to call the configure method and pass in a configuration object as the first argument. We are going to use the plugins property to enable the plugin that we just installed. If you add additional plugins, they should be added to the plugins array. After restarting the server, let's refresh the page to try out our new changes. Since we see a red outline, we know that our template was able to be rendered in the browser. In the web inspector, we see that the compiled template was bundled with the rest of the JavaScript code required by our application. Before we wrap up, I want to show you one more helpful feature of Lasso. If we start our server in development mode, then Lasso will disable some of the production optimizations, such as bundling. This makes our application easier to debug in the browser and more developer friendly. Let's try it out. Let's now start our server with the node environment variable set to development. After reloading the page in our web browser, 
we see that we have many individual JavaScript files being included instead of a single JavaScript bundle. In addition, the URLs are no longer fingerprinted. These developer productivity changes improve stack traces and make it easier to navigate the source files loaded in the browser. Despite these changes in development mode, the page will function exactly the same. Well, that wraps up today's demonstration. We started out with a project only using server-side template rendering and integrated Lasso, a JavaScript module bundler and asset pipeline to allow us to render Marco templates in the browser. When writing code to render a template using Marco, it doesn't matter if the code will be running in the browser or on the server or both. When using a JavaScript module bundler, your JavaScript code will work the same in the browser as it does on the server. With the right plugins or transforms, your templates will automatically be compiled to JavaScript during the bundling phase. In addition, a JavaScript module bundler will take care of including all of the required modules so your page includes exactly what it needs while avoiding all the extra bloat. I hope you enjoy using Marco and Lasso and join us for future screencasts. Thanks for watching.